Greetings programs, welcome back to the Game Grid. You're back with Gaming Magic Mark, it's Baldur's Gate 3, and in this video I wanted to take a look at the multi-class Barbarian Rogue, and uh, just how good it can be with a character like Karlek, it can be great fun with uh, your main character as well, or hirelings, uh, but it really shines when it's Karlek, and it's just thematic from that point of view. It seems to suit her so well, and it's incredible how much resilience it has, but also the ability to have different different ways of dealing with enemies on the battlefield that are really a lot of fun and sort of out of the ordinary, different play style from most others. It leans on the tavern brawler feat and the fact that we're going to have a high strength and dexterity and uh, actually be able to play as both a barbarian and rogue with the thief giving us extra uh, bonus action and then in addition extra attacks as well from the barbarian uh, but attacks that don't miss uh, with rage, with uh, friendly that that's going to turn into that's going to give us really good survivability on the battlefield and really dishing out a lot of damage as well let's take a look at uh, abilities just to start with I'm gonna have strength at 17 because what I want to do is I want to take the tavern brawler that's going to bump it to 18 and with uh, magic items like the mighty cloth that will take us to 20 uh, a high dexterity as well because we're going to be throwing we're going to be using finesse weapons and that's going to allow us to sneak attack as a reaction which is uh, absolutely incredible uh, that we can do the sneak attacks at close range or at range as well a dexterity of uh, a high dexterity will give us the ab ability to lean on the martial weapons capability of the barbarian and be able to uh, use hand crossbows right from the get-go as well a little bit of wisdom just for um, dealing with certain annoying spell effects that enemies can pull upon us uh, we're going to dump intelligence and charisma uh, your mileage may vary you may want to adjust those skills as as you see fit constitution just to help out a little bit with the unarmored um, the unarmored uh, defense feature that the barbarian has but we're really not going to necessarily rely on that fully if something better comes up from an armor perspective up to medium armor then we can make use of that so let's get going we're going to go the first five levels in barbarian that's going to mean that we get the feet tavern brawler early on we could start throwing enemies around the battlefield we can start using them as a uh, <laughs> as a weapon themselves we can we can uh, pick up an enemy and use him to clobber other enemies as well. That's amazing. And uh, you can see that Reckless Attack is going to give us advantage on attack rolls uh, until our next turn. And so that means that if we do that first every uh, round, uh, every turn, then, then actually our other um, attacks are going to benefit from that as well. We've also got Danger Sense. That's very cool. And of course, that's going to help us with a high dexterity. We're also going to have advantage on uh, saving throws uh, that are dexterity based. So we're going to go Barbarian until level five. And, you know, we're going to choose a particular subclass. Now, Wild Heart uh, in the bear would actually give us a lot of survivability. We don't really need that because actually um, the other subclass we're going to use, Berserker, gets a lot of um, great survivability themselves um, from that. And it gives us the ability to use Enraged Throw, a key ability, because we're going to use that to throw uh, daggers. That means that we can knock enemies prone while having a high chance to hit. Um, you can even make an improvised weapon attack as a bonus action. So we can pick up uh, an enemy or something else and just clobber um, people with it as well. Even if we get uh, on the off chance that some, some later enemies in, say, Act 2 and Act 3 start to un uh, disarm you uh, as uh, part of their abilities it doesn't really matter we've got uh, lots of ways we can smash heads uh, with this particular class fantastic so the berserker is the way to go and like i say we're gonna do that until level five level four is the feat and at this point we want the tavern brawler what the tavern brawler is going to do is it's going to give us the ability to bump up strength and then also um, to add our strength modifier twice to the damage and attack rolls so we're going to have a very high chance to hit along with reckless attack it's going to be amazing and so let's go to level five level five is key because that then also brings online our second attack and that's early on uh, in proceedings okay so now at level five character level six what we can do is we can go into the rogue get that going by level eight uh, as a thief and then we're nicely set that will bring online the sneak attack um, ab abilities um, with and actually 
one thing I missed there was uh, just changing perhaps uh, your expertise in certain skills at, uh, at at that level. So just watch out for that. When you go rogue level one, you get your expertise at level one there. I didn't actually change that, but you could have done that uh, as well. And so we're going to go rogue level two. That brings online some very useful abilities, cunning action, hide uh, and dash. But disengages the star for me because sometimes you just want to get away from enemies without having to suffer an attack. Um, Karlak and this build can actually uh, really sustain some massive damage and really mitigate that a lot uh, significantly. But it doesn't really matter because uh, we also have other ways to mitigate the damage, even though we're effectively just wearing cloth armor. Incredible. So there's our level three thief. And of course, that gives us fast hands, extra bonus action, really critical um, in order to you know really make that happen uh, for us as a multi-class. Now we're going to have basically two, at two attacks as an action. We're also going to have um, two uh, bonus actions, which we can use to throw. And uh, you can see with that ability, with some of the combat footage I've included, uh, we're able to knock multiple enemies prone in a single turn, as well as deal with someone up close, which is absolutely brilliant. Our second feat uh, by going Rogue 4. And uh, this is something that we can do. We can actually uh, decide to bring that online much, much sooner by going Rogue Level 4. And this is where I would want to go Ability Improvement and bump my Dexterity up to 18. That's going to affect so many things, especially the ranged, um, range attacking, which is going to be helped by the Tavern Brawler when we throw things. Um, but if we had to lean on our hand crossbows, we could, of course, do that as well. I'm not going to go any higher with Rogue. I'm going to uh, top that out and go back to Barbarian. And this will give us an extra Rage charge and also Mindless Rage. So we actually Frenzied. Uh, when Frenzied, we can't be Charmed or Frightened, which can be crucial with certain enemies that you fight in Act 3. Just going to go to level 11 uh, because, you know, you may want to multi-class in for one dip to something else. Um, but this, we also get Feral Instinct. So we're going earlier on in the round uh, in, in, in the combat with uh, plus three bonus to initiative and can't be surprised. And that's absolutely fantastic. Just going to take a look at a quick, uh, quickly at some of the... Um, weapons and other magical items. Uh, you can see that the Mighty Cloth is taking me up to 20 strength. Now, of course, if you've got potions and other things, uh, Hill Giant strength and whatnot, uh, that's useful. Anything that's going to help you uh, to get, uh, I think, at least one ability to Misty Step or Teleport uh, Dimension Door across the battlefield, I always find I feel better when I've got that ability. Maybe even something that can help you to go invisible, uh, but lots of things that are going to help you to critical more often. Maybe also also some critical um, legendary items like uh, these light finesse short sword or dagger items so that you could potentially throw the dagger in a pinch um, and then also the uh, finesse items are going to be leveraging off of uh, the fact that you could potentially sneak attack with those uh, with those items uh, even at uh, range as well going to get the uh, advantage a lot of the time um, you could also um, go with you know uh, certain things like uh, Paralyzing Critical, the Surgeon, Subjugation Amulet you're going to get. And I also find the Cloak of Dis Displacement really great from the point of view that it helps me um, to just be a little bit more survivable. Enemies are going to have a little bit more t uh, trouble with hitting me. Uh, and there's going to be times when you're in the sewers in Act 3, you're going to get a lot of these uh, murderous cut knives. And they're actually fantastic, um, especially when an enemy's uh, damaged. You can really use them to throw as your throwing ability. Um, so if we actually take a look at the abilities very quickly, you can see that, for example, um, you can ignore that uh, fear attack uh, that comes from an item. But we've got the sneak attack, both ranged and, and, and melee, of course. We need to have advantage. And what's going to set that up is our first attack each go of our two, two main attacks is going to be reckless attack. That's going to give us advantage on attack rolls until the next turn. We're obviously also going to Frenzy as well, and that gives us the ability to make improvised weapon attacks as a bonus action, so that if we don't have anything to throw, we can pick someone up and throw them or attack someone with that person, <laughs> which is absolutely brilliant. But obviously, again, the stars of the show, and one of them is the fact that we can potentially, two times a turn, uh, we can enrage throw, uh, even just one time a turn, but actually two times a turn as well, we can uh, knock other targets prone. 
and that then takes them out of action for uh, the fact that they have to get up, but also for the time that they're prone. They're going to be easier to hit and, um, you know, critical attacks against them. So absolutely brilliant. And with Karlak, we're even getting the benefit of these uh, smites, but of course they won't be uh, usable if uh, we are frenzied, but that's fine. We want to end the frenzy and then potentially, um, you know, use those uh, also for some big, big damage um, with the smiting as well. So it's a multi-class that really can take a lot of damage, soak up a lot of damage from the barbarian side. We get um, two attacks from the barbarian side. We get tavern brawler, gives us lots of different abilities to use uh, throwing and so forth making uh, uh, attacks that make enemies prone when we throw things at them um, and also the sneak attack as a reaction and that can be absolutely crucial as well when we do that we take a take a look at the spell book just go to the reactions and make sure your sneak attacks it's going to ask you so that you can determine if you get a critical or if you just get a, an actual attack where you have uh, advantage against an enemy and of course we're going to have that a lot uh, it's a natural one this is a multi-class that really shone through in tabletop lots of people know about it from years gone by and this has been brought well into uh, Larian's uh, game, Baldur's Gate 3. Wonderful stuff, and I hope you enjoy it. And uh, there we go. Karlak is all set to smash people up on the battlefield there. So enjoy, and thanks for watching, as always. We'll see you next time.